A San Diego judge has ordered a court hearing on a request by News 8 to unseal records in a gun violence restraining order against Larry Miliente. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. And I'm Jesse Pagan. News 8's David Goffertson asked the court to unseal the records filed against the husband of missing mother Maya Miliente. Uh, Jeff Brooker on behalf of the San Diego Police Department. David Goffertson, uh, reporter with KFMB TV. News 8 appeared in court Wednesday at a hearing aimed at unsealing secret records filed in a gun violence restraining order against Larry Miliete, the husband of missing mother Maya Miliete. The sealing orders were attached to the letter which I addressed to the court. The sealed records include two photographs showing a pile of guns on a kitchen table inside the Miliete home and Maya's four-year-old son standing on the table, surrounded by the firearms. News 8 also is asking the judge to make public the unredacted gun violence restraining order petition, which currently has important details of the case blacked out. Larry Miliete's attorney, Bonita Martinez, did not appear in court Wednesday, even though she was given advance notice of the hearing. She's out of town all week and she did not make the appearance. City Attorney Jeff Brooker spoke on behalf of Martinez and the San Diego Police Department, who both want the records kept secret. We both have continuing reasons to want the case to remain sealed. Our reasons are different, but we both want the same thing. Brooker told the judge he wanted to file a written motion to keep the record secret, but that motion also needed to be sealed. We cannot make that representation to the court with the media present because in doing so it would divulge those reasons and defeat the very purpose of the seal in the first place. A different San Diego judge, Catherine Bacall, originally sealed the records before police seized Larry Miliete's guns. But the sealing order was meant to be temporary and the records were supposed to be made public following Larry Miliete's first court appearance, which happened June 22nd. After that hearing, when News 8 requested the records, the court said they remained sealed. I'm a journalist who just believes in open court proceedings, and I'm trying to make an informal request to the court to live up to its sealing orders. A hearing is now set for July 21st, when a judge will decide whether to make the records public. Now, News 8, as I said, originally wrote a informal letter to the judge asking that she unseal the records. But now that it's set for a formal hearing, we have hired a an attorney. That attorney will represent us and argue our case in front of the judge on July 21st. Jesse. Now, David, what do we think will be revealed if these records do get released to the public? These records are expected to reveal the justification police have to go into somebody's house and take their guns. That's what they did to Larry Miliete on May 7th. They took his entire gun collection, and as it stands now, the reasons, the reasonable cause they had to go in and take those guns is being kept secret. David Goffertson on the Miliete case. David, thank you. Police need your help to find a missing 79-year-old woman from Otay Mesa West. Police say this woman, Rita Klamser, was last seen Wednesday morning. She was in a maroon 2005 Buick Terraza minivan with the license plate NANA210. Klamser suffers from a medical condition that may put her at risk. She's described as 5'7", 155 pounds with gray hair and blue eyes. Anyone with information should call San Diego Police. A fight over fireworks in La Jolla is popping off ahead of the 4th of July weekend. Organizers say they're trying to secure an alternate location after San Diego City officials canceled the La Jolla Cove fireworks show because they didn't have a permit. News 8's Heather Hope has the latest. There has been much back and forth involving the city, the La Jolla Fireworks Foundation, and environmental attorneys about how to safely celebrate the 4th of July here as the fireworks show has been in a legal fight and put on hold. Meanwhile, businesses say they could desperately use that boost. The business community really needs something to rally around, and they did with this event. The La Jolla business community is banking on a new location to hold its annual fireworks show. We have plenty of businesses. One of them lost 50% in revenue, so we thought, what a great way 
to bring it back. Organizers learned just days before its planned 4th of July fireworks show that it had been canceled at the Cove due to not having the proper permit. We've had these fireworks for 33 of the last 36 years. We've never been required to get a coastal development permit. The city of San Diego states in part the city did not receive a permit application for the event until June 10th, leaving insufficient time to process the necessary authorizations. While we know this is frustrating, the city must follow all applicable laws. All we know is the situation hasn't changed in 20 years. The seals have been on the damn beaches all that time. They've had their pups there and we've had fireworks there and there's been no negative impact on the seals or the sea lions. And the good old boys club is over. So that's the message to these people that you can't just keep doing things the way you've been doing things and trash the environment and think you're just going to get away with it. It's not going to be permitted anymore. Environmental attorney Brian Pease sued to have the La Jolla fireworks show shut down in order to protect the marine life as there are over 50 sea lion pups that are legally protected and could be drastically impacted due to the fireworks. It can cause deafness in the young and in the older sea lions too. But La Jolla's feel singled out as Imperial Beach and Coronado will both be launching fireworks in the bay without a coastal development permit. And then there's the big bay boom. This week, with virtually no notice to us to scramble around and figure out any alternative, is just basically unfair. Without the much anticipated 20 minute long fireworks show that organizers already paid for, what will businesses do? There is going to be a party with 600 tickets sold and those people are going to have no fireworks because our mayor is saying that he cannot support this show any longer. There's been talk of them launching from another Park, possibly Kellogg Park, which is right across the water. The La Jolla Fireworks Show organizers say they are working around the clock to find a new alternative. Meanwhile, whichever location they choose, that environmental attorney Brian P said he will be working to make sure that could get shut down if it has any potential impacts on sea lions. So the showdown continues and hopefully all can get resolved soon. Heather Hope, News 8. It's Friday and we have the 4th of July weekend right around the corner. I'm Chief Meteorologist Carleen Chavis. We're still holding on to temperatures that will be in the 70s right along the coast. Also starting off the uh, holiday weekend with some coastal fog. That's going to clear out by the afternoon hours, but we are also talking about some upper level moisture upper level moisture that you're seeing right now. Another influx by tomorrow, even offering up a chance we could see a few isolated thunderstorms over the mountains and the desert by the afternoon hours. All of that looks to dry out as we go into Sunday for the 4th of July. So for the actual holiday, we are looking at drier conditions all across the county and 70 still at the coast, but 88 plus inland. Taking a look at uh, Sunday night. So going into festivities, keep in mind when we do have the fireworks, a big bay boom at 9 p.m. That's going to be at 68 degrees. A few clouds will be around and the marine layer rolling in by the nighttime hours. We'll go ahead and take a closer look at your surf forecast coming up in your complete forecast. Jesse. looking for people to join post 4th of July beach cleanup efforts across the county. On Monday the 5th, volunteers will pick up trash at six locations. Belmont Park, Crystal Pier, Moonlight Beach, Oceanside Pier, the OB Pier, and OB Dog Park. Organizers say everyone can do their part by the 4th by cleaning up after themselves. If you bring it, you bring it back. Pack it in, pack it out. So that's a very basic concept that we try to urge. So if it's yours, or even if it's not, if you see it out, bring it back with you. If you'd like to volunteer, we've put a link on our website. Just go to CBS8.com and click on the hot button. Porch pirates, they are more than just annoying, and they could be stealing from you right from your front door. Mm -hmm. As more of us head back to the office for work, we can't keep our eyes on our door. So what can be done to make sure your deliveries are safe? A state senator from San Diego County says he has the answer. News 8's Kirsten Holmes is live on Mount Hope with his proposal. Kirsten. All right, so hey guys, you know porch pirates have been plaguing folks who get home deliveries for years. Imagine someone just walking onto your front porch and taking your stuff. That's not okay. But one local senator says putting them in jail for a year instead of six months, that could stop those thieves in their tracks. But I always you know, stay on the U.S. Post Office because I think it's safer. Karina runs a small business from her home and ships deliveries to her customers regularly. She says she knows porch piracy is on the rise and is making sure her customers aren't victims. They use the tracking number and I'm always, you know, 
uh, in contact with them. So I never had a problem. I see it every time. I, I see it and me and my neighbor across, we report it all the time. Jamel Polk says he's been hit by porch pirates at least six or seven times. He ends up calling the company and getting a replacement, but says no one is hardly ever held accountable. He offers this advice. Get a ring, you know, so I mean, you can have evidence. Polk says he likes the idea of increasing the sentence for porch pirates. Senator Brian Jones's bill 358 just passed California's Public Safety Committee. Its goal is to give judges the option to put porch pirates in jail for a year because Jones says the increase in Californians ordering more food, medicine and other products for home delivery has unfortunately been accompanied with a rise in thefts of those items. Jones says the year in jail should be an effective deterrent. I never think that just like throwing people in jail is the answer to a problem. Jennifer Glear says she's been a victim of porch piracy a few times, but thinks better protecting her deliveries is a better approach. Hey, put that back. Put that back now. Oh, sorry. Now when I get packages delivered to my house, I make sure I'm either going to be home or my neighbors and I now, if we have a something that we're going to get delivered, we just tell each other. Okay, so this bill is not a law just yet. Now, whether or not it becomes a law, we still have to do what we can to protect our items. Back so, to you. So, Kirsten, what can people do to protect their packages in the meantime? Okay, simple things like getting your packages delivered to your job. That's a good idea. How about installing a security camera or just requiring a signature on your package could help stop those porch pirates from getting your stuff. Just a few steps. Kirsten Holmes reporting live. Thanks, Kirsten.